Okay, it's Charlie Murray here. We are doing a channel giveaway for the YouTube and we have this beautiful race jersey. My race jersey. Um, we've got Murray on the back, all the team sponsors. And if you are following, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram at the end of July, then you're in the draw to win that. So make sure you go and subscribe and we'll be drawing that out as well as some other little prizes. So we'll do a first place as the signed jersey and then a second place and a third place as a surprise. We'll send that out to you as well. Cheers. So, what's the pops at? What are we now? Episode four? Or episode three? So, let's just say episode four because it sounds nice. Even number. Um, we're joined by Jesse and Richie. These guys are the two world champions from the last two years of Enduro. Um, well, you were 23 and you were 22, right? And Jack was 21. Yeah. So, we'll have to get Jack next time. But, stoked to have these boys joining. Thanks for coming. How often do you not touch the bike? Like every day you doing like a little spin at least or are some days you're just doing nothing? Every time I see you at a race you're always just riding around. I feel like because I'm overseas and I only have a bike to like do something with. Like your transport? I feel like I ended up, yeah, I ended up being on the bike quite often but it would be nice to not do anything some days. Yeah. Well, it's hard to like not go out and spin to the river or something. It's nice to keep moving a little bit. What do you, do you have days that are just nothing? Yeah, I'm pretty good at that. Yeah? Yeah. What are you up to? Just keep the feet up. Yeah, I read. I try to read. I try to read more than I watch TV for sure. Yeah. Or I just get lost in like YouTube holes and yeah. I, know, I just you, some days you just wake up and you're like, once you've had breakfast and your coffee and you just start like googling shit, you're like, man, it's like one o'clock. I really, I really killed this day. <laughs> that happens way too easily. Yeah. So I wish I could do more of that. No way. Jared's always like, got to keep the body awake, man. Yeah. Bro. I'm tired. I mean, I would say yes, except for like that first block was, I don't know, I think we were in Europe for seven weeks and I was like, man, I like didn't get a day to just yeah, you gotta, chill. You gotta chill. Like, you're traveling. Oh, traveling, moving, you're always like with a team, you always have to do something and you're like, man, I just There's need like other stress one day. It's like your own space, eh? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's be good to get home and have some time off after this, eh? Not really. Well, we're both, I fly straight to Whistler, oh, yeah, and open downhill the first week, then practice in two days. <laughs> Well, two days since you get home. Yeah. Get home super late Tuesday night and then practice Thursday. Okay. We're not for then, you guys. Practice Thursday. Yeah. And then I have a tram route on the Monday and then I have Enduro the next weekend. And then maybe I'll take a break. <laughs> oh, it's hard, eh? Yeah. I'm doing Garbo and A-Line. So he's even more... <laughs> are you doing the... What is it? Speed... Uh, ADH. Yeah, yeah. Are yeah. you doing Enduro too? Same. I'm Thanks. going home on Thursday. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> I got national, leave that. Leave that to Canadians. I got national champs we got. Oh damn! Oh true. Sure. Where's that? Chuck you that sleeve back, bro. Rock Creek, yeah. North Carolina. Yeah. Rod. Oh, was that way? Was that video? Yeah. Rock Creek. Yeah. So. I think. So you got it dialed. Yeah, Richie. Um, was uh my saving grace at nationals in New Zealand because I got smoked by. Yeah, the Ki local the Kiwi local, local dudes. <laughs> And then Richie's like, don't worry, man, the same thing happened to me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, it makes me feel better. Yeah. Dude, like, horses are tough. Yeah. You, like, either get smoked or you're like, this is way too close for comfort. Yeah. People are just yeah. out there to kill you, eh? Yeah. Or kill themselves, I'm not sure. And they almost have, like, less hesitation. I don't know, hesitation is the right word, but we just have They've so much, like, race crap. So, like, yeah, you're like, I don't know, you're kind of always thinking about how fast can I go without blowing mm. up, but they just don't have that thought. They're just like, how fast can I go? Yeah, it's just on the limit. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about <laughs> racing at home? Like, how do you manage it? Because you're in Squamish, there's so many fast riders there. Yeah, it's terrifying. I think I really now, I try to treat it as like training. And I honestly, this year, I, I almost wanted to lose. Yeah. It's going to sound like super, it's... Whatever, like last year was a, a good year, like we were battling and- I find it stressful, like more stressful than sometimes over here? Yeah, and that's why I was like, I just want to like get the, almost like the monkey off my back yeah. of losing at home. I feel like I, I haven't for a while. Yeah. And so I just, I was like, I just want it to be over with. Not, like, you can relax. There's no streak, there's no like pressure on me. <laughs> and <laughs> actually I got beat by, Jack beat me at this like local, local before this comment. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, sick. Like he's on it. That's, that's good. Pressure's off me. You know, he's going to Squamish and Duo and Jack's like the man to beat. Yeah. I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> but you still won the Squamish and Duo. Yeah. yeah. But that was... But you lost one. <laughs> I lost one, yeah. But that's so weird that you can like, I don't know, like be the, be the best in the world or winning World Cups and stuff and then yeah. at a local, local race, be second or third or whatever. Yeah, yeah there was this kid in, I did Which the Tempe Duo, like the, I did three races before I came over to Europe and Tempe Duo was like a super sick blind, like blind format where 
you don't get to practice. You just show up to the day. You don't even know what the course is. Sick. You just follow arrows all day. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a 2,000 meter day. That's all amazing. day. Yeah, it's so sick. And yeah, this one kid was like close to me on a bunch of stages. And I was like, damn, like he lives in Pemberton, but I was. But you were going I was, fast. I was like, yeah, for sure. I wasn't hanging about. <laughs> I was like, shit, that would have been bad if I... I think he actually beat me on a stage. He did beat me on a stage. Yeah. I was like, damn, that shouldn't happen. This local, like, 14-year-old, 15-year-old kid at Nationals two years ago beat me on a stage. Yeah. That's wow. I was like, what? Well, I remember, and I was going faster. I remember 20... Oh, I don't know what year this... It would have been when Casper was, like, just getting on the bike. And we had a Squamish Enduro. We yeah. raced Angry Midget, which is, like, one of the, the, the biggest trails yeah, yeah. in Squamish. And I swear he was, like... I think he won, I think he won that stage, too. And yeah. we were all just, like... Who is this kid? Like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Cass was a pretty good operator. Yeah. What do you can, Richard? You came race New Zealand Nationals. Yeah. Do you feel like you're going fast? No. <laughs> you're, you're cruising. I feel like I was cruising. I like hadn't been on the bike in a while. and It's sketchy though. Right? Yeah, I was just like, yeah, it was super tight there in Nelson. And I was just, yeah. Some of the tracks I had fun on, but it was really hard to race that. Not really being there before. Yeah. That was tough. Did you practice enough? Yeah. yeah, but you need more than practice. Yeah, it's, just, it's like one of those tight spots where like you need to know what's around every Everything's now, yeah, you know every corner. I also like already told myself that I didn't care about my goal was, so I was like, yeah. yeah. But I was just wondering, like, sometimes when you ride super quick or you just ride quick, it almost feels the same sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I was on a limit the whole time at that Nationals, and then I still got beaten by, I don't know, 10 seconds or whatever it was by the other guy. I'm like... What were you doing? Because I was on the limit. Yeah. yeah it's just weird, I, think eh? we've, I think we've all experienced that where I don't think it matters. You're always going to feel like you're at that limit. And sometimes you're just going fast and sometimes you're just not. Mm. So, I don't know. It's just perception. Yeah, it's cool though. It's sick for the locals to have like people like you guys and yeah, um, people like us to race against. Because, yeah, it's cool showing up at the Nationals now. And especially when Richie was there, everyone was frothing. They're like, wow, this is like a yeah, mini totally. World Cup. So you got to cool. come next year. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you almost came this year, right? Did I? Uh, I was missing Louis, you. And Louis was trying yeah, to get to go too as well. Yeah. It's a long, long flight. It is a long flight. Yeah. Can you come back? I might. I don't know. I'm just going to schedule it, but I might end up being in Dillon all the winter. So. Yeah. Sweet. You're playing the yeah. set of the year for sure. Yeah, it's good. You just got to be careful. You don't overdo it. Yeah. Because like, was it Laurie or someone, or even Goldstone, like, they both came out and ended up crashing. I mean, you crash anyway. Right? Yeah. But if you're riding like 20 laps of coronary each day, you can crash. What's, uh, the, what's the race day third? What's like your, yeah, race day third and then also what's just your general diet during like a training week? Race day food, uh, I'm starting with the oats, banana, maybe egg or two, some random stuff on top probably. Are you n even nervous in the morning, like kind of hard to eat or not? <laughs> But I'm That's like, nice. if I don't eat something, I want to feel worse later. So <laughs> just get it in. Just force it down. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and then you start hitting electrolytes like in the morning before the race? Sometimes. Sometimes not, though. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> During the day, it's just, yeah, hard mix with gel and sugar. Just, just sugar get out. it in. Yeah, you know, you're, you're on lollies and stuff? Sometimes, and then, <clears throat> yeah, like if we have like chows or something, get down a bit of rice and some actual solid food if you can. So, mm -hmm. yeah. How many gels would you have in a race there? One a stage, maybe? Like six or something. Yeah. They're pretty horrible, but they do the job. Yeah. They definitely work. Depends on what gels you use then. Yeah, it does. I've had yeah, I mean, our ones aren't horrible, of course, but. I, 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 I mean, you're on the same one, aren't you? Yeah. What are you on? Whatever I can get. Whatever you can get. <laughs> What are you on? Morton. And they just, they taste like nothing. Yeah. But they just, that's perfect. They do the job. I don't uh, care. Yeah. You I like, just, it's like the same mindset of like, I don't, I just need to ingest fuel. I like those ones because they're, they just, they just taste like a clear marshmallow. Yeah, totally. I use the never, the never second one sometimes and they're really, they're really good, but they're a lot sweeter. Yeah, quite flavorful. And you just kind of get sick of that. So you're just like, I've had, I don't know how many of those Morton gels and I, I could still just, I could come back right now and just be like, yeah, really? I just need food. <laughs> Yeah, I usually, <clears throat> I kind of like it when they're like a super strong flavor because then I know that I'm, yeah, uh, that I'm hitting something. I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah so I take that off. It's like a little challenge. Interesting. Get through your gel. Yeah. 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 But it's been hard recently because the liaison has been tight. We've been like low on water sometimes. You lost your water bottle at the last race. Yeah. Oh, it's hot. And then you're trying to put oh, down yeah. a, yeah, it's, and it's a super hot day. You're trying to put down a gel with no water. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. That was tough. 
what do you what do you do? Just you just have to know. Like you just you need to prior you have to prioritize it. Like yeah, if that chance was tight, I'll either like speed up for a bit so I can stop, get yeah. off my bike, and like take a gel, and then and then go go again. But yeah, you just have to you have to know like if you stop ingesting food at any point in the day, you're gonna you're gonna pay for you. it. Like, yeah, you're gonna yeah. hit you. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a never-ending game of just ingesting sugar. That's the hard part about like enduro. Everyone's like, "Oh, you gotta like consume this amount of carbs per hour." Yeah. But you're like, "All right, I might have one water bottle for two hours." Yeah, I can't like, gotta balance it out. Yeah, totally. You just have to try your best, and yeah. but you just have to keep forward planning, like you said, because it's so yeah. easy to get in the hole, and then you start to come back. Yeah, we totally. don't really come back. Like actually, like come black, we actually had like a lot of water accidents. Like, that one the climb, truck. one climb of the two was shorter than I thought to the yeah. cafe. And then we had that water up there. It was only like an hour. Or so. Yeah. It's like, well, well thankfully they had like, that water jug on the way to three and four. I thought it was gonna be the like, truck. Yeah. Yeah. That was a safe. But without like, that, like, yeah. I had lost my bottle. Luckily, I had a flask. But I was like, man, I would have been absolutely cooked. Oh, you had the flask, yeah. 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 Oh, I've been watching some uh, Roger Federer videos recently, and he's been getting me inspired. So I'm gonna have to say Federer right now. What do you think? Man, I just, I have too many sports and too many people that I enjoy watching. Are you a massive sports fan? Yeah, I, I now I watch so much, yeah, so much racing. But Is that a Canadian thing? Because Finn's a massive sports fan. I too. saw that in that video, but different racing. Like, I'm like Supercross, Motocross, MotoGP, Formula One, uh, obviously all bike racing. I watch cross, I watch road racing, I watch... Anything on two wheels, pretty much. Yeah, it's busy. Yeah, it's busy. <laughs> what are you doing? You're racing. You're racing this weekend. There's a GP on and a, a motocross. Yeah, that's, what do you do? You just try not to go on Instagram and try not to spoil it. I'm pretty good at like I don't have, like I won't go on Instagram and then I'll just like save it and like watch it. At yeah, some point, but. that's good. Yeah. So you, you can't pick one. Yeah. Uh, you gotta pick one. Just throw a name out there. There's just a lot floating in my head. Like, I, I had this question a, a while ago. I had this hockey player I grew up watching, Martin St. Louis, like, super small, super good player, and just so gritty. And I, like, I grew up playing hockey, and yeah. I was, like, that small kid that just, like, got knocked around a bunch, but just Didn't never stopped trying. Yeah, and so I really liked him. So What's that, Mar- 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 Martin St. Louis? That's awesome. Yeah, and I'm trying to think of, like, a skier. But, like, someone like Sam and Carlson or something. Yeah, yeah. Growing up watching him, and he's still, like, he's still doing it. He's sick. Dumont. Some Dumont. 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 Sick, yeah. Richie? Uh, What's your favorite sport? What are you the biggest fan of? <sighs> Hard to pick. I don't know. I'm not like super into really one thing. You watch Moto? I do. Which is nice because then you race Saturday or Friday and then you get to watch Moto at night. Yeah. When's Moto? Saturday night. Or something. Saturday night. Saturday. Like, uh, I was in the museum on Sunday. 7 o'clock. Oh, yeah. So who, who's your favorite motor rider then? Supercross. I don't know. I like Tom Max. Tom Max. Okay. <laughs> um, what about you? What did I say? Federer. Oh, Federer. Yeah, I grew up watching tennis with my parents too. And the Federer and Nadal battles is pretty good. Yeah. I'm not a huge tennis fan, but I just have been seeing some stuff that he's been doing recently. It's pretty epic. And also that Netflix series with um, Michael Jordan. Yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, I can feel it. Oh, yeah. The... Uh, the last dance. <clears throat> That's sick. Yeah, I've I've enjoyed watching all the drama coming like post the last dance. Just all of his teammates calling him out for yeah, yeah. making a bunch of shit up. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing when it's one person's story. Yeah, it's it's one person's story, right? Yeah, it's not going to have all the sides. Uh, I think it's uh, good but, good drama. Yeah, but then like if we got to really get in deep, like not a sportsman, but Ernest Shackleton. Who's that? The guy who um tried to go to the South Pole and then got caught in the ice with that ship. Endurance, oh, you've got to read that book, man. If you're into your reading, the, the Endurance, favorite book I've read recently. Yeah. It's insane. These guys are like stuck in the ice for a year Whoa. and they have endless, endless night. It's just dark. They're in a ship and the ice is like creaking out, it starts leaking. They're gonna go like plug the holes, and then eventually the whole thing gets crushed and they have to bail out onto the ice. So they're camping on the ice, watching their ship sink, and they have to do these um, missions back to get like timber and nails and food for the dogs and like all this stuff. They have a husky team with them. What? And they're living like off seals and stuff they can shoot. 
and they've only got a limited amount of bullets, and they have to live down there for, I think, a year or a year and a half, and eventually they sail a lifeboat. They, like, hammer boards on <coughs> so it doesn't get swamped by the big seas and make it a bit taller. Yeah. And they sail it non-stop from, uh, to South Georgia from Elephant Island, which is, like, this pretty much the most dangerous stretch of um, ocean in the world. Yeah. And this tiny boat that's, like, from here to the wall. Wow. And then that all the rest of them are camping on this elephant island and they have to get like a whaling vessel to go back and rescue them the next spring so they're still there. And Amazing. one guy has to get like his toes amp- amputated. Wow. It's super nice. So that makes what we do seem easy. I watched that movie about that, uh, was it the Tulane uh, soccer team that like the plane crashed in the Andes or something? Yeah. That's and, now, yeah. And they survived there for... A year or something that was a wild wild story yeah yeah so yeah endurance shackleton i'll put it on the list definitely worth a look are you a big reader as well no <laughs> i try but no, yeah. well you say your main hobby is it's not bikes <laughs> bikes <laughs> road bikes yeah road bike i've been frothing the roadie recently yeah, the moto here and there what are you running what what, what moto are you running KTM 300 FC. Oh, nice. Mm. You want the motor, motor guy? No. Uh, Team did? That's a retirement, okay. retirement plan. I have too many bikes that I enjoy riding, honestly. Yeah. yeah it's hard to find yeah. time for everything. And I feel like I don't like being bad at things, so I would spend way too much time on the moto and Not like right. no time on the motor. Yeah. I get on like every like, you know, like once or twice a month. So yeah. it's like every time you get on, you're like, you gotta like, teach yourself and like learn, yeah. it's fun to like learn but it's fun but that's fun because you have like at least a base level of knowing how to do it yeah. I would have to start from knowing nothing you just yeah. have to be careful that you're like okay I could open it up but let me just do a few laps you get good enough where you can just start cruising and yeah and not going fast but just it be took like a drive. year or two to get like stuff on but yeah. the trials like is nice for keeping into it you got trials yeah what's that gas gas 280 it's like 2014 280 things work yeah <laughs> I just bought an electric trials, which has been That's my sick. favorite purchase ever. Because yeah. at home, we can just ride from home. Oh, I don't know. I'll just ride up the streets and then just go into the hills, go up all the yeah. trails and rocks. And we got all that volcanic rock and crashes. I feel like that's <laughs> what I would probably get. But you, it would be sick yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, well yeah. Such a sick trials are still better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's been ride trials in Squamish. Yeah, yeah that's huge. Yeah. And the e trials are sick because it's like no maintenance really. Yeah. Basically, just like a bike, yeah. but it's still got a clutch, so you can hop it. Oh, sweet. And they reckon they've got the same amount of power as like a 300. Yeah. So, yeah. Crazy. I'm selling them for them, but you should get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was thinking of trying to get a trials bike when I was out in Spanish. Or trying to like just borrow one to ride. But yeah, you should be fine someone. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the trails there are like world class. So yeah. It's wild. I just see like people, they'll go out like after work and just rip up and they get this insane view of the whole like ocean and mountains and in the practice day or after practice day are you trying to nail like certain technical sections or are you just trying to link the whole trail together and for the whole every stage or there's some stages like I'm going to win this stage and I'm going to be fifth on this stage or are you just trying to win every stage I feel like it's constantly evolving I think that I used to try to memorize stages and then I really enjoy like first lap down in practice is just like the most fun I have Yeah. fresh track yeah. you're just having like fun you're flowing so I try to like Within reason and whatever is safe, I try to keep that for race day and try not to know too much because I enjoy just like reading as it comes up. Yeah. But it's hard sometimes. Like, overthinking it's hard. I've also realized, you know, we've been racing a lot of the venues for so many years that yeah. even if we don't remember them exactly, you get on track and you kind of just, know, you just have like a feeling for it. You feel comfortable. And then we've got a few fresh, uh, like new rounds this year and you like are watching GoPro. I remember in Poland, I was like, Man, I'm so lost on this stage. Like, I have no idea where I am. And then you're on the wrong stage. Yeah, and then uh, and then you start making mistakes, and you're like, okay, I should probably like, maybe I should I should remember more at this stage. <laughs> I've been like that this year. At some points, I'm like, okay, this is coming up, yeah. and then I'm like, oh wait, no, that's like two stages yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's one of the problems I have with like trying to remember too much. Is then you start like mixing things up, and then you slow down. I think you're better yeah. to remember less sometimes. Yeah. What do you reckon, Richie? Yeah, I feel like this year I've been kind of bad with like memorizing stages but i feel like some of the venues yeah like leo gang we raced before and nolly we've raced before but just trying to like find a flow like i feel like helps a bit more like 
become blue. Like people will be like, "Oh, you remember that section here and there?" I'd be like, "What? Like, what are you talking about?" Like, it's horrible it's when like, someone's like, "Yeah, yeah, you know the left, really, really hard yeah. left with that drop on it," and you're like, "No." <laughs> but it was nice. At least like there, you could race everything. Like look ahead. It was kind of like easier yeah. to race. Yeah. In that uh, aspect, but but I think that was you could read like, it pretty well. I think we're gonna struggle with that here after the first couple. After number yeah. one, all the trials you could read. Yeah. Yeah. I think here's like a lot of jank taping through yeah. some rocks and if you don't know where you're going <laughs> it's gonna be a bad day <laughs> it's been sick we've had quite a few new, vin- new, yeah, new just, venues which is so good because no. off last year we went to Ludon Vial and I just felt so behind yeah behind the eight ball like work. yeah all these guys are just flying I'm like I'm on the limit and they're still going 10 seconds quicker well, and it's even worse for like, but well, not worse, but like the French have raised so many French cups there. Yeah. And they're just so bad. That's what I thought. Like, I mean, there was one stage and I was like, I, yeah, I was like, man, I just dialed that stage. And I was like, shit, like four yeah. Frenchies in front of me. And I'm like, huh. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah. I'd say, Richie, even if you haven't been good at watching the GoPros, it seems to be working. It's been out. working. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was, yeah. I don't know. Just dreams. Yeah. So yeah, do you watch them after or you just No I do. I depends. I like I feel like if I watch GoPro then I know that I did a bit of homework that I yeah. should have done. Because mm. I've definitely gone on the races like usually races when I ru- like when I race at home, I will, like won't watch like any GoPro. So yeah. I'm like I just need a break from that. Yeah. And then, then I'm like, Oh yeah, it's kind of, for me it like kinda of sucks. And I think then, that's the hardest thing at racing at home is you almost want to break from like the full yeah. workload if you want to call it of like a world enduro. Which is probably good because then you save your real high performance for here. I think so. But like in Squamish, I was like, I'm at home. I did their practice, and I was the last thing I wanted to do was watch GoPro. Did you? I did, yeah. Because yeah. I was like, well, I, I can't, it's part of my process. So like, I feel like I have to. And then you do like, like a, it's like a practice race. For I a feel World a Cup. ton of pressure because I'm like, <clears> if I'm not watching GoPro, other like wherever else might be watching GoPro, and they're gonna beat me. It's like you, you said, it's it's different when you're, yeah, expected to win. I guess when you're at home, you got a tag on your back. Yeah. Quite here, here it's quite nice because Richie's expected to win, so yeah. I can just do whatever I want. But it's interesting. So we were talking <laughs> earlier about uh, well, you you were saying like doing like the work of watching GoPro, and this year has been interesting because like when things are working and you're winning, yeah, you you almost you don't get like lax on the things you have to do, but you you just everything's everything's easy. so easy. So you're not doing all the things. And this year I really felt like okay, I need to get back to my like what did I do a couple years ago yeah. that like started to help me win. Yeah, because I feel like. It's not that you don't need to do it or you think you're like better than it. it you're just winning. So you're like, okay, like I don't need to watch that go, but you just have this like confidence. It's interesting. I don't know if it's going to work out. But. What are you trying to change? Is there anything you can tell us about it? Well, the, the GoPro is one for sure. There's just more. Like just focusing more when you're watching it. Yeah. Yeah. And just. I like, how, do you, how do you focus for half an hour? I, I just watch it for five, ten minutes and then I'm just no, like. No, focus for like one, out. one watch. That's what I don't like doing. It's just like watching a stage and then you're like, I didn't really watch that stage. So I like watch it again. <laughs> I try to just do like one concerted really well. effort. Yeah, I feel like here it could be all right because I feel like Cumbalow, everything was very similar. Here, I feel like there'd be more distinct pieces of track that you can yeah. do. Like, all right, I yeah. come through this open section now. We're in something else. The Swiss races always are pretty interesting. Yeah, I thought Zermatt was cool. Cramontana was cool because you have that alpine and like it's a lot of walking trail. But walking trail, when it's good walking trail, can be sick. Can be sick. Yeah, I, sh- I think I struggle in Switzerland because because it's walking trail. Because the way that I think like we practice is like quite fast and things come up at you like really quick and it's just super dangerous. And I struggle with like, you know, the mindset of a course designer who doesn't understand like how fast yeah. you're practicing. And when we can't like see something blind, we're not great checking. We're just like assuming it's going to be good. <laughs> and you know, times that I would, I would be a little careful on stage two. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been told that here, like, like I'm in a cruise practice. Yeah. <laughs> because we have one run, so you have to like. I know you have to. You be have fast. to just be pretty fast. Because if you're not gonna watch GoPro, you need to know like how fast can I go in this section so that for racing, here's how fast I can go. Mm. So I try to practice like almost as fast as I can. Have yeah. you walked stage two? Yeah. And there's some blind rolls. Who's not blind? Stage two is the one that's like up. I don't think there's anything blind, but just like it's a very rocky walking trail. Mm. That, like. We don't necessarily follow it the whole time. Ah, that's so, like you'll be like going down him, and all of a sudden it shapes like this, and it like points you into the grass. Yeah, it's it's. I'd rather just stay on the trail, probably. It's good because I did try to like slow it down, make it a little more interesting. Okay. But yes, yeah, I think it's a 
fun for. Yeah. yeah I like those stuff that you got to improvise on. Yeah, that's technical. That's style. why I like Palm Blue as well. It was like super technical. Yeah. And it wasn't just how fast you got this line. It was yeah. like how technically skilled are you to get to this section. Yeah. And some of the sections you get there and you'd be like, cross your fingers. <laughs> like, thank God. Well, that was definitely a uh, Leo gag. Yeah, that was Leo gag. Yeah. Don't like. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Some of those sections you're just actually just like, all right, roll the dice. Yeah. <laughs> like on a top of Hangman, like me and you, like I know when I'm with that short little like Rudy piece. Yeah. Where Slab like went flying with the bars. <clears throat> I saw. I went through there and I was just like, oh wow, I made it through. Sick. <laughs> Kept on going. Yeah, same. Yeah. I, I like came to that, my bike started stepping out and I just held it and somehow it worked. I've got this clip and it's like me sketchy. And then me like trying to pedal out of it and front wheel drifting around the stump. And I'm like, wow, how did that <laughs> Yeah. Totally. But the cool thing is about Enduro is like stuff does just work if you're confident. Yeah. Well, until it doesn't. Yeah, until it doesn't. <laughs> like obviously, it doesn't always work. But <laughs> That's the drama. Most yeah. of the time it does. <clears throat> Thankfully though, they shorten two and I think four because of the snow. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's snow up at two as well. Yeah. So right, one starts on the ridge. Yeah. Well, I guess that kind of brings brings me to the thought of predictions for the race and also girls' predictions. Seeing there's no girls here, we can more comfortably talk about that. It would be a bit awkward with our predictions, but we can try that too. I've heard Richie's just winning stage one, so I've heard his five minutes of pedaling. Yeah, someone said it. it's like pretty... Have you walked stage one? Chichi's like, yeah. He, he's like, you thought the climb in Canazay was bad? This is... Five times worse. Really? So it's going to take seven minutes. And we're at 3,000 meters up there. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> two and a half. I thought it was 2.9. The and top half. of the Gondi, the top of the, the bin, Tally, Tally Freak or whatever, uh, is, um, is 2.9. Oh, okay. I don't know if the stage starts from there though. No, maybe not. Okay. But it's high. Yeah. It's, too, it's, it's too high to be easy. <laughs> yeah, my prediction is good. Did he walk it? Uh, yeah, he, I think he's walking all Yeah. I think, <clears throat> yeah, it's hard to look past Richie. So she's saying he's been winning every other race pretty much. A little, little afraid. Swabek said his uh, stump's feeling good. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. Slab's also a danger man. Yeah, probably. Yeah. As soon as, oh. I think Jack's hungry. <clears throat> uh, Menzies. No, Moya. Moya. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, there's so many people that could take it. Yeah. Yeah, I think Moya. I mean, you will be up there, man. You got it. Yeah. We, we're going to keep up with <laughs> What about girls? Girls, I also think Hattie is hungry. I think yeah. she's had like a, maybe a couple off rounds. And I think she wants to show that she's back there and if it's physical. But yeah, Hattie, Hattie's definitely hard to look past. But then also Isabel is just such a... She's just got that, that class. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say Hattie, Isabel, Ella. Yeah, I think Ella's always strong and fit. Yeah. It'd be cool to see Bex and Chloe... Up there as well. Yeah, and ALN. And ALN, yeah. Yeah. I think it's been hard a little bit. Like, I mean, it's been hard for me with these tight liaisons. So I think for the girls who often take longer on the stages, yeah, they have less time. So they've got well, a shorter liaison than yeah. we've got. Yeah. <laughs> so how's that feel? I know, I feel bad. I was like, <laughs> can was hard. Like, I was, yeah, I was. Like, we weren't talking my much way, on like, that last yeah, we one. Were. <laughs> and I hate it. I hate when it's like, no one stopped, like, it's like, it's like last person and then the 30 second gap to like, they have up the climb and yeah. up the climb and I was like, I just want to like ride with those guys. But no one's like, I'm glad you found out like waiting. that one was short. Yeah. Because it made it easier for us. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was easier. like, if we didn't know that. Already down on yeah. one and he was like, hey, this chance is really short. And I was like, oh, okay. Who's that? So like, we, yeah, yeah. And we were just like, okay. So we just like got on it. We were good. And I just like did not stop pedaling until I got to the top and I had five minutes and I was like, oh. And, yeah, we were going quick and we didn't stop. Yeah. And we only had five minutes. Yeah. So I'm I like, saw, I stopped for water. Yeah. I started, started to fill up water. Started to fill up water. But, that's when but it was like in. 30 seconds. It was like, boom, water. And then it's like, you got to go. And we're like, we're off. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah, going harder than I wanted to go. I'm back on. Yeah, I would have happily chilled. And then I would have had more energy for later in the day, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, for, and for us, it's good to have a hard race. Yeah. But for the girls, like, it needs to be, you need to be able to race the stages properly. Yeah. But when you're struggling that much on the liaisons, like even at the end of Combo, I was like, I want to give more. Yeah. But I didn't have anything left. And for the girls, that's going to happen a few stages earlier. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that was something we should look at a little bit. And here, if we've got more lifts and more friendly liaisons, maybe it means everyone can perform better. We're still doing 1500 meters. Still a decent day. And with lifts, like, I, I generally think with lifts, we almost get more leads on time because they have to, like... Yeah. The lifts go fast. Well, it's almost like they have to allow time for a lift stoppage or anything uh, yeah. like that. Because yeah. otherwise, you can just get so sued. Yeah, yeah. So, we have, like, three lifts here. So, I think it'll be... I think it'll be mellow. Mm. Yeah, I don't know where the... And we have the day off. So, like, is it open racing on, on Friday? Oh, sure. So, if so, it's a big problem, we'll see. So, well, but then... We don't have we don't have to wait for open, so I guarantee you we start earlier, and then we'll have more of a day, so we can have longer time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. True. So I think that's, that's what's been screwing us is the open starts. We start so late. E bike gets around. Trying to fit six Opens stages in just the afternoon, and we're starting at like eleven. Yeah, and it's like, well, yeah, we're finishing at like seven. Wasn't our, our first stage in Combo was at like one? Remember we were like After those crashes. Yeah. Is that one? Yeah. Around it was around one. And then we, that was the first stage. Then we still had to do five more stages yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. So you're right. It will be better like this. I think so. No, um, good. Well, we probably can wrap it up. Except for the rain on Friday. What is the weather? Rain? I think there's rain. Friday, maybe, the only day? It kind of feels like it's going to rain yeah, today. It's it's rain today yeah. Is it going to? I don't need rain on any of that stuff up there. No, some of the rocks. Have you walked it? No. Some of the rocks. I think the rocks up there will be fine. Stuff over here, the rocks are Okay. You can do watch this one, stage five. Yeah. Yeah, apparently it's pretty tech. <laughs> it's just straight for you just like. Just go down the ridge for like three minutes. And yeah. It's like straight. Did they like chicane it and bust no. off it at all? Just straight. And then three, Far, the right. top of three, there's just probably like 45 seconds there. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for breakfast. This is going to be cool. Yeah. Hopefully it's safe. We'll see. There, there's one. Chill on. Thankfully it's after a climb, but there's one climb on three. And you like hook a left. It's just like a sure. nice, like clip on your right side. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. You're really right. scaring me, Richie. Is this your tactic? I don't know. I'm freaked out now. That's good. You guys are like insane. Yeah, okay. So I, tip, yeah, thanks man. I'm gonna be looking out the whole day for this left corner you after want, a climb. So every climb I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna be looking around. I probably won't even know. I have to, I've been requested by the YouTube comments to ask you guys um, your max powers and your max bench and squat. You do or you? <laughs> huh? You do or you? Just you. You just want to know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. But that's why I asked Bruni and Finn, and then they said I'll keep all the comment guys. Are like we love this. Keep it coming. What about like thirty seconds power. Okay, yeah. thirty seconds power. <laughs> I don't. Know. I hit. A I didn't hit a thousand watts for thirty actually this month. Really? Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. That was pretty happy. I was doing sprinting at Ben Jackson. <laughs> oh, that's impressive because. Who was telling me, one of these guys in the Tour de France, we were watching the Tour de France, and one of my buddies was like, oh, yeah, this dude, he's epic. He can hit 1,100 for 30 seconds. Damn. Yeah. So, so you're, those, you're up there. Those guys, though, can do it, like... Repeatedly. Yeah, probably. I was, like, on the ground diet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had to do, like, a 45-second effort, and I just obviously went, got too excited <laughs> and only made it 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Bruni reckons he, he has got 850 for a minute. Yeah, I was looking at those of so my watt. I did a because he was competing like a world. ten point. Because you were saying like a 10.5, 10.8? Yeah, something like that. And I was around that for a minute. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But you're way lighter. What do you weigh? So that's what I mean. So like, I'm a. I don't know. I'm, right now, who knows? In Europe, I usually just go up. <laughs> if, you like, to, if you had to guess, like, uh, I'd like to be sixty nine. Yeah, yeah. Sixty nine. Sixty eight's like uh, winter training, like yeah. road camp weight. Okay, yeah. I'm. The other day I jumped on the scale was 80. I'm usually 79. Yeah. Richie, you're 93? Probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so we've got like a good, a good step between us. Left or right? So right what's, your, what's your 30 seconds? I feel like probably the same as you. Like, around it. I haven't done it. Well. You gotta give it a good... Like, this was a good go. I don't think I'm going over it. I think you are. I think you are. I think you are. Dude, I watch you. You're probably yeah. in the yeah. race like... Yeah. 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 Puppies, man. Like... <laughs> It looked strong, but the power... My theory with Richie, though, is that he's got, like, insane repeatable sprints. Yeah. Like, today we... Well, I can do it all day, literally. Today yeah. we did a five-minute threshold, and out of me and Slab, and me, Slab, Ryan, I'm the lowest. Yeah, but Slab's a beast. And I feel Ryan's like Ryan's also, pretty fair. Ryan is pretty gnarly, too. And he did a five-minute threshold today. Did you? Yeah. Okay, so Max, I, I max sprint power, I think... 
Yeah, what's your max per month? <clears throat> and also per weight, because that's what matters. It doesn't matter so much. Yeah, totally. Give us the number, and then we know you're 69, so we can figure it out. I can, like, hit 16, like, pretty consistently. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> On, like, a max power. Yeah. And then I can do, like, a... <clears throat> like, a, not a three second or five second, that's, like, a max power. Yeah. yeah. But I can do, like, a 14 or 1500 five second. Yeah. Yeah. That's solid. That power to is pretty good, I think. Yeah. And what about you, Richard? We were asking you last week, but... Yeah, I can't remember. hit, like, 1900. Big watts. Yeah. What am I? Yeah, good. on a good day, I could probably be 17 or 18, but no more. Yeah. Yeah, on a good day. On a mountain bike, too. So much harder on a road oh, bike. So much harder on a road <laughs> bike. Yeah. 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 I feel like I'm going to, on a road bike, I'm going to, if I, like, snap a chain or, start, or miss a gear, I'm going to go over the bars. I don't have enough to hold on to. Yeah. It's gonna go boof off the front. I find I'm so I'm yeah, I gotta <clears> I gotta like watch I watch I gotta watch more tourist spins and how those guys do it, but so you have your, like two hundred watts left in the foot Yeah. Oh. Sounds about right. Yeah. And you just went with your shocks locked on or off? If I sprint? Yeah. I always have my bike on, like soft. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really change your power, right? I mean it I feel like you're putting so much it depends how you're sprinting. I feel like when you're max sprinting you're, you're doing, like twisting. Yeah, you're not like Bouncing, you know. Yeah. Right. For sprinting on the roadie, apparently, instead of having your hands like here, you got to be like right yeah. in the hoops. Yeah. And you got to be pulling. But the problem is with as that, like, you got to watch your wrist. I bruise my wrist all the time. On the top yeah. of the hood. On yeah. Because you don't even notice it. Like I'll do these group rides, and you're like, there's like all these sprint finishes, and you just so like adrenaline just flipping, and then the next day you like wake up and you're like, man, I got like crazy on the top of your arms. Yeah. yeah. Because you're like you're in the hoods and you're hitting it like on the top of your bar, and you don't even notice it when you're sprinting because you just want to win. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and we've been to heights too. Now we've done it. Uh, Richard and I've already done it. One sixty-seven. I'm sure. One sixty-seven. I'm one eighty-two, and you're one eighty. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the heights and the weights. So you can set your bike up exactly like these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly like. What What are we missing? Do you guys? Do you do like max bench and squat or not really? No, I have a bad back, so I don't do heavy squats mm -hmm. ever. Fair enough. Yeah, I was like, uh, the last time I did, I was in New Zealand and I was hanging out with like, um, <laughs> he's got a Tasman, like high performance or something. He's got a gym oh, Tasman Delu. I know. Yeah, it's Jason. Jason High Climber. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I was hanging out with him and they were working at the, there's other gym. Um, him and, uh, I forget his name now, but, and they were just like, like frothing on me and like going riding and like going to the gym. So I they put me on this like pyramid set and I hit like three fifteen was my max. Pound. Three fifteen pound. Yeah. So that doesn't mean much to me, but three oh. plates. Yeah, it should be three plates. One forty. Should be three plates. Three yeah. plates each side. Yeah. One forty. Yeah. That's really good. And it was on a, like I did fifteen, it was like fifteen reps and thirteen and eleven. Like you're dropping yeah, yeah. reps but increasing weight. Yeah. So the last one was like one rep at max weight. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. That was like 2017. That's impressive, though. Just now I do like if I do, I don't like ever do two plates anymore. Yeah, yeah. just like fast with one plate. Yeah, because like, yeah, just from skiing, I have too many, too many hucks to flat. Yeah, my back's messed up. <laughs> did you bench? Yeah. What did you do on the bench? Just one plate. Yeah, yeah. So try to, that's try 60. To do, try to do body weight. And you weigh 69, so it's pretty much body weight. Yeah. I could do body weight, but I do like I don't do one right now. Yeah, I just I generally like the least I'll do is probably eight reps. I think for me, I can do just over body weight on the bench, like 1.1, 1.15 or something. So, what's that like 90? What's Ricky got? Yeah, yeah, I can do a little bit over body weight. It's like 100. What's I feel that? like you can definitely like a lot though, can't you? With like two plates. Yeah. And what about on the yeah, did you deadlift? Did you deadlift? I can do four or Four plates. Four, yeah. What's that? One eighty. Yeah. Like, that's pretty good. <laughs> My squat's not very good. I can squat. Yeah. I can do like three fifteen for a couple of reps. And like probably. Yeah. One forty. My squat's probably my best. I think I do. I think I hit twice body weight the other day. Was that say like one sixty or one one fifty eight or something? Like wow. Well, nice yeah, like, <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, my legs are knackered. Nah, <laughs> nah, this is probably when I left New Zealand, so like three, four months ago. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, we've been let you get to your next meeting, Jesse. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Wolf Cop episode four, with these legends. And yeah. like and subscribe. 
Um, drop, drop a comment on what you want to know about these boys. They'll, they'll get in the comments. They won't reply to you if you're lucky. Yeah, I'll be on my, on my YouTube channel. I'll reply in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Go follow these boys too on Instagram and YouTube. Jesse's dropping some good content. We're working on Richie. We're going to get him on the YouTube as well. <laughs> oh, live live. Yeah. Live live, At the moment, he's on my YouTube, which is great too. But. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time.